Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mind Your Moz, episode 23. You see a lot of people talking about how dangerous it is to, to, to put batteries in water or if it falls in water or gets caught in the wash. And so I wanted to go over a little bit today what actually happens when batteries do get into water and what if it's not just plain water, but what if it's something that's got uh, salt or dirt or something that makes it more conductive. Then we do a couple of tests and see what the results are. Uh, the first thing we can do is measure the voltage on the battery so we know where we're starting from and we'll look at the display over here because if it's getting discharged in the water we want to see that and we're at 4.204 volts fully charged and the first thing we can do is that and I should probably not be splattering water over all the equipment and stuff and put it down into the water. Now, typically if you're dropping something into a toilet, a kitchen sink, uh, somewhere, you're going to be retrieving it fairly quickly. So we'll give it a few seconds in there and uh, do a quick dry off. And let's see what, uh, obviously it didn't explode, but let's see what happens. Let's see how far the battery discharged down. Oh, 4.204 volts. So absolutely nothing happened. Well, then why is everyone so worried about these exploding? Well, so well, the good thing is let's let's check. Well, this is terrific, but let's check. Why did nothing actually happen? Let's take a look at water itself. Now this is just tap water, and if we go down in, we take a measurement. We're at about 58, 60,000 ohms. 58 to 60 kilo ohms. Now let's do a, a little bit of math here. And if we take 4.2 volts and we do uh, 68,000, excuse me, 60,000 ohms, we've got 70 microamps. That's all the current that's flowing from here through this water. 70 millionths of an amp. Water is actually a lousy conductor of electricity. That, that 60,000 ohms of resistance, you know, about that distance apart, uh, it, you don't get a lot of current flowing from something that's got voltage this low. Now, the reason why water is very bad when you have very high voltage, like coming from the AC mains, 120 volt, 220 volt, is there's a lot more voltage pushing current through the water and it only takes a little bit of current, milliamps of current, to stop a human heart. So that combination of being very easy to stop the heart with uh, electric current and very high voltage from the wall, pushing enough current through the water, that makes water so dangerous when you're dealing with electricity from the wall. But from a 4.2 volt battery, there's just not enough voltage to push current through regular tap water to discharge this. At 70 microamps, it'd probably take, a, I don't know, a, a year or two or something. Uh, 70 microamps is about what this thing discharges on its own internally as its self-discharge rate. Uh, but you're saying, Mooch, you know, who drops their batteries into perfectly clean tap water? Well, you're right. Somebody may uh, leave these in a plastic container in their pocket and then put their stuff through the wash or they, they'll drop it into a puddle outside or something. And to simulate that, you know, let's start with a, a dash of salt, something to make it more conductive. You know, it's just a small amount. I don't want to go crazy. You, you just want to... You know, just, just a, a small touch. I don't want to go crazy with that. And we'll just try to get enough of it dissolved here. This is warm water. I uh, nuked it beforehand just to make this a little bit easier because it is freezing here today. Now, this is obviously a heck of a lot more conductive than the water was before. And I'm just going to stir it for a few more seconds. Usually you know when the salt's being dissolved, when you start to see it going a little bit clearer, not as cloudy. And I'm just starting to see that now. Yeah, I don't feel any more scratchiness. Okay. And let's confirm our voltage. 
4.204 volts and in she goes. Now I don't know if you can see that at this end. Do you see that bubbling? That's the electrolysis. That is current flowing. That will eventually eat this battery alive and release the contents into the water. Now that's not a big problem. Uh, that it makes it toxic but it isn't exploding. But obviously something's going on. Current is flowing because we're getting that electrolysis. Okay, let's take this out. By the way, never, ever try to discharge your batteries in salt water. You, you saw that metal being eaten up. Uh, that's what the bubbles were. So you, you don't, the, the reaction, the electrolysis reaction, what happens is you start dissolving the battery itself, releasing the, the toxic internals into this, and you're just making a nasty toxic liquid, and the contacts and stuff may actually never be discharged. The testing or the internal inside of the battery may never be fully discharged doing it that way. The contacts will dissolve before it discharges. The test that I have done, it just doesn't work very well. If you, if you have a battery you want to get rid of, just tape the ends and recycle it. If you have a LiPo battery with the tabs, the tabs will dissolve before the battery is totally discharged. It, it's just not needed. Just wrap it up so nothing can short circuit and get it recycled. Okay, we're at 4.204 volts. Let's see what we got. 4.20100. So we lost about three thousandths of a volt. And if we take a resistance measurement, so certainly not short circuited. And if I can actually hook, if we take a resistance measurement, we're down to about 22, 25 kilo ohms. It's actually going up. Let's talk, call it 35 kilo ohms, which is maybe half the resistance or less of where we were before. So we may be at 100 millionths of an amp coming out of here, and it would take, oh, six months to discharge if it didn't totally dissolve away first in a few hours. So it's just not a big issue to have this thing dropping into water. Now, a couple of you may be saying, but Mooch, you know, what happens if we put it through the wash? You know, how bad is that going to be? You know, that could be uh, 30 minutes or something like that. <gasps> Whoa, I have a 30 minute timer here. Well, okay, let's find out. Let's drop it in. I'll put, move it over here so we can see the bubbles. If it would stop rolling everywhere, that's going to roll anyway. And we'll start the timer and we'll come back in 30 minutes and we'll test the voltage. Yeah, if, if I haven't uh, exploded in a, a, a lithium fireball before then. Okay, that is our 30 minutes. As you can see, we've got an interesting brew here. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can still see the bubbles from us splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And let's take this out of here and check it what the voltage has dropped to. I don't know if you can see that, but that terminal is a disaster. It is severely corroded and eventually that would corrode away. Opening up the interior of the battery, releasing the organic solvents and all kinds of other nasty stuff. Okay, let's see if I can actually work through the corrosion and get a voltage reading here. Okay, we're still, even after a half hour, in that pretty dang salty water, we're at 4.13 volts. So, there's very little current flowing. <clears throat> it's not a good way to discharge a battery, if you, what I warned against before. And you just don't have to worry that much about a battery dropping into water. Now, no one can say it's safe to drop a battery in water. I don't know what's going on inside your battery. I don't know its condition. Maybe there was impact and it landed in water. I don't know. But the water itself isn't causing a problem. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. What about the lithium that's inside here? You know, a lot of you have seen the videos where lithium and, and other metals uh, explode and contact in water or in chemistry class or something. Well, 
Thing is, for in a rechargeable lithium ion battery, there is no metallic lithium. The lithium itself is bound up into a metal oxide, a rusted couple of metals, powder, that does not react with water. Now, you get minor reactions with some of the solvents and other ingredients in here, but there's nothing violent, nothing energetic, <clears throat> excuse me, nothing like what you see in the videos when they take a hunk, hunk of metallic lithium or, or sodium or potassium or something, another metal like that, and expose it to water. It's only in non-rechargeable or what they call primary lithium metal batteries where you get metallic uh, lithium and it becomes a problem. Now here's just a comparison between uh, a new contact and the one that's been uh, <laughs> discharging, foaming away inside. And I, you know, like the warning at the beginning of the video, please don't try to recreate anything that you've seen here. I'm doing it so no one else has to. I can't say a battery is completely safe if it drops in water, because it's not safe to use these things anyway. They're never meant to be used outside of a battery pack. But water itself and batteries, lithium ion batteries getting wet on its own is not a problem. If it's just fresh water, shake out the water. Don't put it in rice, that's useless. You're just trapping the water inside of it. Put it in front of a fan or something. For goodness sakes, don't heat up the battery to dry it out. If it's dirty water, salty water, or one through the wash or something like that, you may have to unwrap and rewrap the battery, unwrap it, dry it off. Because uh, if you get salt water or something underneath the top insulating ring, that can actually attract moisture and on a humid day and start discharging the battery slowly. You might find that, feel the battery and feel it's a little bit warm <clears throat> because the moisture is activating the salts that's trapped underneath the ring. So it's best if you're completely comfortable doing it and you understand the minor risks involved to rewrap the battery and cleaning it off uh, anything that may have gotten deposit on it when you dropped it in. So water itself, not a problem. Thank you for watching. Thank you.